Welcome to Netherdale for a real test for Scotland's under-20 side against their French counterparts. And just to put this into perspective, in 21 attempts, Scotland have yet to win at this level. So are we going to see a bit of history or are France going to run riot? Well, let's go upstairs and join our commentator, Bruce Miller. And out come the French, led by their captain. The French side sees eight changes in personnel and two positional switches from the side which defeated Italy by 19 points to five last Saturday. Perpignan's Tom Ecochard is restored to the scrum half position while Toulouse number eight, Carl Chateau, once again leads the side. Half-backs Eric Escond and Ilian Perrault drop to the bench alongside newcomer Jimmy Yobo and the French are coached by France's record cap holder, Toulouse legend Fabien Toulou. And out now come the Scots, led by their captain, Harry Leonard, of course, from Edinburgh Rugby. The Scots have made two enforced changes to the side, which lost in Wales a fortnight ago. Finn Russell comes in at centre, while South African-born Osprey's scrum half, Matthew Torrance, forms a new half-back partnership with captain Harry Leonard. Winger Jamie Farndale, who celebrated his 18th birthday on Tuesday, will be looking to add to the two tries he scored against the Welsh. Gala's Russell Anderson has been recalled to the bench and will hope to make an appearance on his home patch and the Scots are coached by former British Lion Peter Wright. But the question is, will the French backline see this? Or will a dominant French scrum try and get this ball driven over the Scots line? Pick and go there and in comes the right winger. And Darley Domvo looked like he was over that Scots line and in fact, the French have got the ball down there. The referee awards the try to the French. It's been coming for quite some time. Tap and go there from the free kick by the Scots, trying up the pace of the game. Back it comes to Leonard there. And there could be space here on the stand side for the Scots. A chance for the left winger. The tackles just made there by the French is Michael Crawley, the Buramuir winger, got very, very close to that French try line. Up again to the French 22. A referee spots an infringement at the breakdown and a chance here for the Scots to get themselves on the scoreboard right in front of the post centre field and Harry Leonard the captain catches that one cleanly and the Scots are on the scoreboard they play 26 and a half minutes here at Netherdale it's Scotland 3, France 8 Leonard just glances up at the posts he catches that one well it's certainly got the distance and it is through the middle once again for Leonard as he doubles the Scots tally. This could be dangerous for the Scots here. The French forwards, big and powerful, make good ground once again. Drive this one on. Once again, a little pod of three or four French forwards standing off. Just shift the point of contact cleverly there, the French. The first receiver handed it on and out it comes to the back this time. And through the middle there comes the centre. Jonathan Dante. Over he goes and the referee awards the try there. 33 minutes played here at Netherdale and the extras added there by Echo Shard extends the French lead out at Scotland 6, France 15 and away go the French again in their own half but looking to play in the step out the tackle there Bastien Fusteri shoulder charges the next man and this could be a third try of the evening for the French Darley Domvo the Bordeaux winger Goes over for the French, third try. Missed tackles there by the Scots. It was Bastien Fuster, the man that did the damage, stepped out the first tackle, bumped off the second man with the shoulder, and then offloaded there to his winger, Darley Domvo. Great try there by the French. And the Scots struggling with the physicality of this big French side. The conversion there by Tom Echoshard. And the score now at Netherdale, Scotland 6, France 22. Back comes the ball again to Leonard, looks for men out wide. And once again, there could be space on this stand side. The ball quickly out there to Michael Crawley. He's brought down well. It's the metre or so in from touch. The Scots deep now in the French 22. Back it goes to Leonard. The one he steps through here, Leonard looking for support and he's offloaded there and the Scots could be in for the first try. Adam Sinclair, the man there. And Leonard initially looked like he was trying to bring Johnny Gray in. 
but Gray seemed to overrun him, so Leonard just decided to have a little go himself. He managed to escape from the first tackle. And Adam Sinclair, and he's crashed over for the Scots first try. Harry Leonard now to add the extras, and that will certainly have given the Scots some hope as the referee blows the half-time whistle. It's Scotland 13, France 22. A new French front row of Raphael Carbou, Roman Taufefenua and Jefferson Poirot. And again, solid platform there for the French. Out along that back line it goes. And there could be space for the French over on that far side. Good pace there. Ball by Bastien Fuster bringing in Darley Domvo from that right wing. And it's with the French forwards once again and Johan Aluat. The man who crashes up the middle, the referee playing an advantage here. It's Raphael Carbou, the replacement hooker. Gets himself involved there. The ball slung away to the far side again, and Aliou, we've seen plenty of him this evening. Fights his way up to the Scots 22. Nice little one-handed offload there by the second row. Good skills. And the Scots will have to be sound in defence here. They've been found wanting at times in the first half. They've given themselves hope with that try towards the end of the first half. They can't afford to concede here, though. The French just getting set at the back of the breakdown. Tackled there, though, by the Scots. Just inside their 22. And once again, it's the French backs and a clean breakthrough there by Selpori. Can he get to the line himself? He's dragged down about five metres short by the Scots' defence. If the French can recycle this one quickly, it could be dangerous. There is Jedrasiak. He's driven back, though. Good Scots defence. Still the French in possession. Two or three metres short of that Scots line. The ball at the back of the breakdown here, and the French just pick and go round the corner once again. They're very close to that Scottish try line. And the referee having a close look here. That's a better scrum there by the Scots. The French don't get this one moving forward initially. And the number eight, the captain Chateau, picks up a little offload inside and overgo the French for the fourth try. Alban Placine, the beer it's blind side. The man who scores it, the number eight Chateau picked up and then the little inside ball, one-handed straight into the arms of Alban Placine. Harry Leonard likes to try and keep the scoreboard ticking over for the Scots. Just lost the second row, Adam Sinclair to the sin bin. A good kick there by Leonard. As he slots his third penalty of the evening. And the gap down to 11. The Scots, remember, down to 14 men. They're the team playing all the rugby. Just now, Finn Russell takes it back in towards the safety of his pack. Out it comes there by McConnell. It's scrappy, but picked up well there by Harry Leonard. He just steps and dances and works his way through. Once again, nice little offload here, and this could be the Scots' second try. Drag down just short there of the French line. A chance again for the Scots, so if they can get that ball out into space, down to 14 men, the Scots, and they've scored their second try of the night. They've got in past the first Scots defender, they've offloaded well that ball, just a little bit behind there, but there could be space for the French here, this could be the try, dropped once again over the line there by Johan Artrou. Danger averted just by the Scots. And play deep in the Scots 22, yet again. Little inside ball there, oh, intercept try. Well, the Scots thought they were away. Mitch Eady, interception there. But a penalty to the French, and they elect to go for posts. He strikes that one well. Cheers from the French crowd. And the referee brings a halt to proceedings. It finished here at Netherdale. Scotland 21, France 30. Uh, it was uh, it was uh, very very hard uh, on the end of the of the match and uh, well I think uh, all the all the spectators uh, can be happy uh, um, 
uh, about this match because uh, there was a, a lot of entertainment. Were you surprised at uh, the way that Scotland kept persevering and, and kept it so close? No, no, I'm not surprised. I, I, I know the, the, the spirit of, uh, of, uh, uh, of your, your team or for your country, so uh, I, I knew uh, uh, it will be difficult for, for us. But um, uh, I, I'm very proud of, uh, of my player because uh, they, they win uh, against, uh, I think, a good, a good team. And uh, our uh, forwards was, uh, were v very good. You know, and we're getting better. You know, we, we were poor against England. We were far better against um, Wales. And, you know, we, we really, I think we've improved a massive amount. But we're still not winning games. And, and that's, the, that's what we just said in there. It's, there's no point in having these great performances when you can't win. Uh, and it's, it's the age old problem, isn't it? It's talking about gallant losers. And, and it's nice to be a gallant loser now and again, but, but not consistently. But, you know, we're going in the right direction. There's seven more games left this season, including the World Cup. And uh, obviously, we, we just want to keep improving every game. And we play um, Ireland in two weeks' time. And, and that'll be a tough game in Athlone. And, uh, but we'll build up to it, we'll go into it with real positives and, and some real positive play and positive attitude.